Hey, welcome back. So now you're really good at turning percentages into decimals and into fractions. In this lesson, we're going to work on some percentage problems, but we're going to do them without a calculator. There are some times when um, you just should be able to make some calculations quickly, mentally, and percentages have a lot of really neat features that make them easy to work with or just to figure out a little bit if you're in a position where you don't have access to a calculator. So let's get started today. We're going to be talking about percentages that are multiples of 5%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 20%, but our key places are going to be with 10% and 100%. From there, we're going to build up to everything else. Let's get started. Our first goal is to figure out how to calculate 10% of something. You'll remember when we were working with a fraction of an amount, we used that word of to remind us that we needed to multiply. You know that the decimal equivalent of 10% is 0 0.1, otherwise known as the fractional equivalent of 10%, 1 tenth. So if we wanted to calculate 10% of 57, that would be like saying 0.1 multiplied by 57. And when you do the multiplication, 1 times 57 is 57, and include one decimal place, there we have it, 5.7. If you wanted to do this uh, in the fractional way, you would say 1 tenth of 57, so we'd be multiplying by 57. And of course, when we're working with fractions, this becomes 57 divided by 10, which you probably already know is 5.7. And of course, we're going to get the same answer either way. But the point here is to show you how the answer relates to the original question. Again, the digits didn't change. We still have a 5, we still have a 7. If you want to calculate 10% of a quantity, we need 1 tenth of it. And that just moves the decimal point one space to the left. So we don't need a calculator to help us figure out what 10% of anything is. 10% of 80 is 8, because that's 1 tenth of 80. 80 divided by 10. 10% 10 of 2.6, we need to take 2.6 and chop it up into 10 pieces. Each piece is going to be worth 0.26. You should be able to do parts C and D all by yourself. Pause the recording, give it a shot. All right, let's see what you did. 10% of 37,894 should be 3,789.4, just moving that decimal point one space to the left. 10% of 0 0.003 is 0 0.0003, again moving that decimal point one space to the left. There we go, 10%. Super easy to calculate. 100% of something is even easier because you know that 100% is equal to 1. If you have 100% of something, you have it all. As a fraction, this is 100 over 100. You have the whole thing. 100% of something is the whole amount. This is worth 1 all the time. All right, so we flip to the next page. This is even easier than before. If you want 100% of 630, you want all of 630. And all of 630 is um, 630. That's it. 100% of 27.6, you want it all. All of 27.6 is 27.6. You probably don't even have to pause the recording to do the next two. Give them a shot. One hundred percent of four thousand three hundred eighty nine is four thousand three hundred eighty nine. 
100% of 0 0.017 is 0 0.017. That's it. You just have the whole thing, whatever it happens to be. All right, and those are our two basics, 10% of something and 100% of something. From there, we're just going to build. So if 10% of 80 is 8, what do you suppose 20% of 80 is? It probably won't shock you to find out that 20% of 80 is 16. All we did was take 8 and multiply by 2, because 10% times 2 gives us 20%. So we're going to start by finding 10% of the quantity, and then we're going to have to multiply by some whole number. We don't know exactly what the whole number is going to be. It depends upon the percentage that we're trying to get. So let's slide down a little bit and give this a shot. So we don't have a calculator. We're going to have to work this out by hand if we need to. We would like 30% of 76. So in terms of estimating, 30% of 76 is, um, well, it's close to half, but pretty far less than half as well. So it should be, let's see, half of 76 would be like 38. So 30% of 76 should be maybe, I don't know, 20 something ish. Let's just see where that is. 10% of 76 is, well, that's easy, 7.6. Just move the decimal to one space to the left. If we want 30% of 76, we need to take 3 and multiply by 7.6. Um, I'm just going to use a little scratch paper over here. 7.6 times 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 7 is 21. Plus 1 is 22. Put in the decimal point. There we go. This 30% of 76 is 22.8, and that's really all there is to it. If we wanted 40% of 320, the first thing we would find is 10% of 320. 10% 10 of 320 is 32. Just move in that decimal point, one space to the left. Boop. If you want 40% of 320, we would need 4 times 32. If you need a little space, whoops, not 36. If you need a little space to do some scratch calculations, come on off to the side. But our job is to multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. There we go. That's it. 40% of 320 is 128. Now, of course, we don't want to forget about estimating. 40% is a little bit closer to half, because half is 50%. So this, let's see, half of 320, that would be 160. 128 seems to be in the right ballpark. You need to pause the recording, see what you can do with 80% of 2.4, and then come on back. All right, so I'm going to catch up to you now. 10% of 2.4 is 0 0.24. If I want 80% of 2.4, I need to take 8 and multiply by 0.24. Come off to the side and do that. 0.24 multiplied by 8. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 3 more gives me 19. I need two decimal places. Whoops, not there. Now let's leave that there for a second. That wouldn't even make sense, would it? 80% of 2.4 is less than the whole thing, and 19.2 is the wrong size. The decimal point belongs here, because we need two decimal places in the answer. So 80% of 2.4 is close to the whole thing. 1.92 seems pretty reasonable. All right, moving on to the next page. There, see, not so bad. If we keep that same idea, we can also calculate 200% or 300% or 400% of something. So for example, maybe we're looking at 32. 100% 100 of 32 is 32. And that means 200% of 32 is, well, double that, 64. Just like we did a second ago, if we want to calculate percentages that are multiples of 100%, we'll take the whole thing and multiply by whatever whole number we need to get us to the appropriate multiple of 100%. Okay, so let's see. Here we go. We would like to figure out 300% of 27. We know that 100% of 27 is 27. So 300% of 27 is going to be 3 times 27. We don't have our calculators handy, so let's just do this off to the side. 
27 times 3 is 81. And there we go, the end. That's what 300% of 27 is. 400% of 825. You know what? Why don't you try the next two all on your own and then come back when you're done. And hopefully you decided that what needed to happen was to multiply 825 by 4. So if we do that multiplication, we end up with 3,300. 400% 400 of 825 is 3,300. The same thing will happen down here if we want 800% of 3.4. We know the whole thing is 3.4, so we need to multiply 3.4 by 8. Ah, I can't talk and write at the same time. To find 800% of it. And let's see what that is. 4 times 8 is 32. 24 plus 3 more is 27, and we need one decimal place. 800% of 3.4 is 27.2. So it just became 8 times larger than it was. All right, so we can calculate multiples of 10%. 10%, 20%, 50%, 70%, 90%, 100%, and we can get multiples of 100%. So let's get some of the things that are in between. How do we calculate 5% of something or 50% of something? It's probably exactly what you think. If you know what 10% of something is, then to find 5%, we just cut it in half. 10% of 80 is 8, so 5% of 80 will be half of 8, which is 4. The same thing is true for 50% of something. It's half of the whole. 100% of 64 is 64. 50% of 64 is half of 64, otherwise known as 32. So if we want to have 5% of a quantity, we need to find half of 10% of the same quantity. Half of, not the quantity, but half of 10% of the same quantity. If you want 50%, we need half of 100% of the quantity, whatever that happens to be. So let's give that a shot. Here we go. We would like 5% of 38. We know that 10% of 38 is 3.8. So 5% of 38 should be 3.8 divided by 2. 3.8 divided by 2, well, let's see, today we're working without our calculator, so let's actually do the division. 3.8 divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 once. With 1 left over, bring down the 8. 2 goes into 18 9 times. Don't forget about your decimal point. If you didn't know that 3.8 divided by 2 is 1.9, now you do. And that's pretty much the way it works. That's it. Why don't you pause the recording and give this one a try on your own also, and then I'll come back and catch up with you. Ten percent of 85.2 is 8.52. So if we wanted five percent of 85.2, we would need to take 8.52 and cut that in half, divide it by two. 8.52 dividing by 2 goes in there 4 times, 2 goes into 5 twice, with 1 left over, bring down the 2, there we are, 4.26. If we wanted 50% of 3.4, remember that 50% means half, 100% is the whole thing, 50% of 3.4 is 3.4 divided by 2, and that, of course, is 
So 3.4 divided by 2 is 1.7. All right, and that's pretty much it. From here, we're just going to combine everything that we know. If you wanted to find 15% of something, you could calculate 10% of something, calculate 5% of something, and then add them together. If you wanted to find 55% of something, you could find 50% of something, find 5% of something, and then add them together. And that's pretty much the plan. So I'll help you out with one. Actually, I think I'll walk all of these through with you. Let's give this a shot, just so we keep it all nice and organized. Here we go. We want 15% tip on the food bill. We do this all the time. You've heard people ask, how much should we leave for a tip? What's 15% of $30? Here we go. Now you can amaze your friends. Ha, yeah, I know. Anyway, here we go. If we wanted 10% of 30 you know that would be 3. If you wanted 5% of 30, you know that would be half of 3, which is 1.5. And if we put these together, we will end up with 15% of 30. So I wrote the of 30 down all the time just to remind you that we have to be taking the percentage of the same thing in order to add them. So over here, we want to add 3 plus 1.5, and that gives us 4.5, which tells us, of course, that the tip should be $4.50. There we go. That's the way it works. Just use something like this so that we stay organized. And remember, right now we're just doing these things mentally so that we have a good sense of where things are, or if we don't happen to have a calculator, we can work it out. because things that are multiples of 5% are fairly easy to do. In the next lesson, we'll do some ones that are not multiples of 5% and we'll use the calculator so we can do things both ways. All right, here we go. Back to the question. We have a 45% down payment on a job. And there are a couple of ways that we can do this. So the first thing that I'm going to think of is that 45% is like 40% of 1650 and 5% of 1650. And I can just add those together. So that's going to be my plan to begin with. Let's come here off to the side. 10% of 1650 is 165. So if I wanted 40% of that, I would take that 165 and multiply by 4. And that comes out to be 660. So I'm going to bring this value over here. If I wanted 5%, of 1,650. Then I would take the 165 and cut it in half because 165 was 10 percent. 2 goes into 16 8 times, 2 goes into 5 twice with 1 left over, bring down the 0, 2 goes into 10 5 times. So we have 82 and a half. There we go, 82 and a half. If I add those together, I end up with 742 5. So the down payment is $742.50. All right. Maybe you thought about 45% a different way. There's lots of ways we can do this. Let's try it one more time. Maybe you thought of 45% as being 40%, oops, sorry, undo that, not 40%, as being 50% of 1,650 minus 5%. Yeah, it works this way also. So let's see what we would have. 
Well, a second ago, we already calculated 5%. We know that 5% turned out to be 82.5. So the only new piece of information we need right now is 50% of 1650. And just like we did before, 100% of 1650, that's the whole thing, is 1650. So if we wanted 50% of that, we would take 1650 and divide by 2. And of course, that would give us 825. So we have 825 minus 82.5. If you need to, put in the placeholder, but we just want to subtract, and it won't surprise us one bit that the answer comes up to be 742.5, just like it did before. So you can think about this in more than one way, and that's fine. It should all work out the same. Let's check out two more examples here, and then we'll call it good for the day. At the bottom of the page, we have an example that involves the symbol here, plus or minus. We did this once before when we were talking about tolerance. It's the same symbol. It still means plus or minus. So here we have um, a motor that needs to be able to operate at the voltage that's on the label, plus or minus 10%. So the nameplate voltage is here, 460 volts. If we wanted 10% of the nameplate voltage, we need 10% of 460 volts, which we can calculate very quickly as being 46 volts. There, that's the easy part. The high limit then, we just want to take that nameplate voltage, which is 460 volts, add on an extra 10%, that's 46 volts, and the sum turns out to be 506 volts. If we want the lower limit, then we would just subtract. We would take 460, subtract the 46, and see that this is 414. And this gives us the voltage range for the motor. So we say that the voltage range is from 414 volts oops, to 560 volts. And that's pretty much it. And the last thing we want to do Let's talk about what's called a service factor. So the service factor of a motor talks about the reserve horsepower of the motor. Pretty much means the motor is capable of working at a horsepower beyond what's on the label. Not necessarily a lot beyond what's on the label, but you can go a little bit above. And that's all described by this thing called service factor. Service factor is usually given as a decimal and we write it as, or we interpret it as a percentage. So the service factor here is 1.35, and that means 135%. What this means, well, we can think of it two ways. One, we can look at this 0.35 that's been added to the one. Remember, 100% is the whole amount. That's that whole amount listed on the label. So the 0.35 is extra. That's overload. So you can think of it as saying that the overload is 35% of the horsepower listed on the nameplate. Or you can say that the motor can safely operate at a horsepower that is 135% of, so more than the whole horsepower that's listed. Let's see what we can do with this. The service factor of a 1.5 horsepower motor is 1.35, and we'd like to find the maximum safe horsepower. So what we need is a game plan and some space. There we go. How are we going to get to 135%? So I'm just going to write this up here so we have some space for it, and then we'll do some calculations down below. If you want 
we need 100% of what's on the label. So 100% of one and a half. We'll also need another 30% of one and a half, and we'll need another five percent of one and a half. And if we add all of those together, we will end up with 135 percent of one and a half. The question is, what are all of these things worth? Well, the top line is easy. 100 percent of one and a half, that's just the whole thing one and a half. For 30 percent we're going to have to do a little side calculation. So let's come down here. I'm going to change colors. What is 10 percent of one and a half? Well we know that. Just move the decimal point one space to the left. It's 0.15. If we want 30 percent of one and a half, we just want to take that 0.15 and multiply it by 3. and that's 0.45. So since this is blue, I'm going to write it over here in blue. That way we can trace it. We'll do the next one in, um, well, let's just say, how about black? Again, we have 10% of 1.5 is 0.15. So if we wanted 5% of 1.5, we would need to take 0.15 and divide it by 2. I like to think of this as being 15 just inside my mind. I know 2 was into 15 seven times with, uh, we have to bring down the 1 that's left over and add another 0. 2 goes into 10 five times. But there we go, 0 0.075. So we'll do this in black. And of course our job is to add. Not a bad idea to put in some placeholders just so we keep everything lined up. But then with the adding, 135% of one and a half is 2.2, whoops, 2.0, can't add very well today, 2.025. And that should make some sense. Remember, 100% is one and a half, so we certainly need more than that. And finally, the answer. Yes, let's not forget about the answer. The question was asking about the maximum safe horsepower. And this is 2.025, and the units are horsepower. And there you go, that's it. Give your homework a good shot. And we'll talk to you in a little while and do some more percentage problems. Have a great day. Bye-bye.